Chalmers YouTube tutorial. And in this little exercise, we're going to have a look at processing raw images. That's photographs taken by a DSLR camera or um, halide on the iPad or iPhone. Anything that takes raw images and shows up in your photos as a raw file. Now I keep all my photos in Apple Photos. Um, it's much easier. They, they get, they're available on all my devices and so on. But we won't go into that. What we need to look at is I'll show you importing from photos. Now Recents is up here in the top corner. And the photo I want to show you is a photo with a bird in it. Now you can see how each of these photos, ah, oh, now I've opened that one, have the raw file on them. Let's just close that one down, go back into that again, go back into Recents, and there we are. Now you can see that series of photos has the word raw in there. That's because they were taken with my DSLR Micro Four Thirds camera, and they were taken early morning, some birds on the feeder. Now the one, the second row down on the right hand side, there's a feeder that's, the sun was striking the window and creating um, strange lighting effects there. But it ended up too dark and of course what I wanted was the bird. Now processing a raw image, for beginners if you like, because I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail here, is fairly straightforward. Let's open that file loading from photos and you can see that's really quite dark but observe up the top here where it says the top left hand side it says raw dmc g5 it's an olympus m.40 to 150 millimeter lens taken at f 4.0 um, to 5.6 iso 800 f8 132 millimeter so it was almost extended out to its full length one eight hundredth of a second. Now, if we have a look at the commands list, sync before, sync after, swap, toggle, clipped highlights. Oh, and you think, my goodness, what's in there? Well, there's a lot of stuff in there. But what we want to do first is just bring up the tones in that. Bring up the highlights. We want to process it a little bit before we develop it. Think of this as the negative. Now let's have a look at the right hand side. There's some histogram there. There's the exposure. Now what do you think? It might be overexposed or underexposed? Possibly underexposed. So let's bring it up a little bit. There we go. That's much better. Black point, zero percent. No, the blacks in that aren't too bad. I might leave them where they are. The brightness, does it need to be brighter? If it goes brighter, then the, the roof of that little birdhouse will probably wash out. Yeah. It's not too bad, though. Ten percent. Let's take it back down. Let's shuffle that right across. You can see the difference there. Now, the brightness fills in the background, but it it washes it out a little bit. I might just leave that at zero. Contrast, you can enhance the contrast a little bit. I'm trying to make the, the bird that's fluttering at the edge there, who's, it's just about to land. There we go, that's a little bit sharper, 10%. I'd go in very small increments of any of these to start with. Four, 5% clarity. Saturation. We could probably bring up the green of those palm fronds a little bit. That's not too bad. 12. Mm, it's not making much difference there, is it? No, it's bringing the fence up too much. Let's make that 5. The vibrance, well, that'll do the same thing, much the same. make that five percent as well okay now will white balance make any difference because the camera's got white balance built into it so we're using what the camera saw at the moment 
No, there's no difference there. Now, as a photograph, that doesn't look too bad, does it? Obviously, there's a lot of wastage in there. We'd need to crop it slightly. There's the only part of the image that we really want. Go back to there. Now we can develop the photo. Do you think that's clear enough? That's not too bad. Of course, the bird is on the move, so that's always going to be difficult to get right. But you can see, don't just open the photo and press develop. What you can do is do all of this first. Let's see if we can bring the contrast up to 15%. Just to sharpen the little flying bird's wings up a little bit. Its tail feathers are spread right out for balance. And its wings... That's lovely. Clarity. 12% here, yeah, just adjusting those a little bit. Saturation and vibrance are okay. Okay, now we've got that. I would think that's not too bad because it's that little bird flying into the nest and the other one watching its approach. And you can just imagine if there was a conversation between those two, what's going on? And really, that's all there is to, and that's developed. Now, you can see there, that's the pixel background, and that's our image. What I want to do is save a copy. Sparrow on Sparrow on the wing. So I know where that is when I want to come back to it. And it'll be in Affinity Photo. Save that there. And there it is. Now what I should have done before I even started this, and silly me I didn't do it, was make a duplicate and lock that layer there it is locked that's the the sandwich menu at the top and the word lock okay for a moment I forgot where that was but that's exactly the same. You see, I can, I can, uh, I could probably delete that, and, and it won't save over the original file. But there's, there's my original now, and it's locked. The, the, the original's locked. The copy's not. And that's all there is to it, unless, of course, you want to go to there and export that image, but you don't want to save it into your. Well, you could save it into your Photos app. Let's do that. That should be really easy. Save image. There's the image saved. Let's call it again. Bird on the bird on the wing. Very imaginative name, as you can see, but that's all right. Okay, PNG. Now I'm going to save that into AF hyphen photo. That's my export folder if you like now let's go and see if we can find those we'll just back out of that for a moment and you can see there's the one I'm working on let's just save it in the we'll rename it you don't want to rename it untitled bird raw that's all we need to do and we can save that that saved it in the work folder. Now let's just close that for a moment and open photos. 
most recent. And there's our little bird on the wing. Now that's done from a raw image and the raw images, as you know, are stored in photos. Well, I've got them stored in photos. They don't show up there as raw images. However, if I open that, go to there, investigate, and that tells me about it. It's a PNG file. Of course, that's what I saved it as. It's an image name, etc., etc. Gives you all of the camera details. And that's done. And you can send that to anywhere you like now. All sorts of places. But we'll just close that down. Go back there. Close that down. And reopen that. Isn't that easy? Don't be afraid to process raw images. Raw images have a wealth of detail in them. And, and you can see, hang on a sec while I go back there. We'll just leave that there for a moment. We'll go back to photos. Go to photos. No, we don't want that one. This is recents. Albums. Recents. What I want is... That one there. You see, that's the original file. And we've brought it up and it now looks really nice. Just keep that fixed in your mind. That one and that one. Much easier to see the detail. Now, this is a very short exercise and I'm absolutely certain that if I were to work on this carefully, I could make that even sharper. Because you can see what we have there is the, um, the the birdhouse is not quite sharp enough. But I was aiming for the bird. Now the bird is quite sharp. But the rest of it is a little bit, just a tiny bit fuzzy. And that's not really what we want. But you can do all that before you save your image. You see now that image is saved. Any alteration in there is going to be really difficult. Albums, back to there, bring up there. And you can, you may have seen from that that I'm using um, Affinity Photo for iPad and the beta version 1.8.3, which is due to be released very soon, within days, I would think. Uh, but don't let that worry you. It works just as well in 1.8.2 and even earlier versions. Processing raw images. Uh, processing raw photographs. Of course, nothing else will be a raw image except taken with a camera. And it's a standard camera uh, that it's taken with. And if you're worried about where you can find raw images to process, let me show you. There's an app for the iOS system called Halide. And that's it there. And that takes raw photos. And it's, it, it's a very good camera. In fact, it has lots of controls. Manual controls, automatic controls, and so on. Now, if I snap that now, because I've got it set up um, to automatically take raw images. And that's my desk in the background there. A good messy desk, just as it should be. Okay. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.